how is it that I'm editing video and in the video we're sitting in the truck and it's raining as it's raining outside <laughs> what have you been up to I've been riding on a daydream we're, are we we're technically full-time living in the RV <laughs> Um, I don't feel like I am because I'm sitting at the house, uh, but um, we are still cleaning out the house. Uh, we have some errands that we have to run today. Um, Heidi has been taking a lot of the stuff to uh, the, uh, I'm trying to think what the, it's kind of a, it's a consignment shop. Uh, I don't know. that It's stuff that didn't go to the yard sale or was at the yard sale, but Within just a couple of days, we kind of just put it all in baskets and said, you know, it's best to just take this to the consignment shop because we have a local consignment shop that actually has a couple stores, one in Salem and one in Alliance. Uh, the, what they do is they'll take, it's called Kid Zone, but they'll take any clothes, um, you know, adults, kids, teenagers, it doesn't make a difference, and they'll, they'll sell it on consignment, and they, they do a pretty good job we've never gotten rich from it but there's been times that we've dropped off large amounts of clothes and came back in you know six months to a year and we'll have you know twenty thirty dollars there that's uh, available so that's kinda nice really I just want to make sure it goes to you know to a place that gives it a chance um, to be used again um, whatever they don't want to put out on their racks, they go ahead and donate to Goodwill or Salvation Army, you know, right away. So that's kind of nice. Kind of an RV daydream, what you doing, I guess, start here. We've been back from camping uh, for the overnight trip that we had to do for Ruff's RV to look at our rear window. And we have... Uh, been hanging out here in the driveway for the last let's see I guess that would have been uh, three four days I guess it's going on four days now so I'm editing the video and by the time you're watching this one you've already seen it and it's uh, like I said it's us getting caught in that storm which was kinda crazy and it was a very long video I tried to chop it up as much as possible but one thing I noticed on that video we kind of set it near the end there but man, I'm telling you, it is uh, it is definitely such a huge weight that was lifted off our shoulder uh, that our septic passed. And uh, just to give you an idea, the septic we which they found out they had to dig it up the uh, records. It was installed in 1961 was when they put indoor plumbing in the house. So 1961. So uh, next year, 2021 that septic system would be 60 years old and it's fully functional it's still working of course we take care of it we've never abused it her grandparents obviously took care of it because when we got here no issues and uh, I guess that's just to show you what a good system will do if you uh, if you do what you're supposed to and take care of it it also helped the fact that the only thing that ever went into the septic system was the toilet a bathtub and the bathroom sink and that's it through all these years so no washing machine soap no dishwasher soap uh, no soap and food particles from the kitchen um, you know the kitchen sink so there's a lot of stuff that could have been going uh, to the uh, septic system all these years but it didn't so uh, again just goes to show you what a good system treated you know well uh, will do so again reiterating that's a huge huge thing for us so our plans are still moving forward. Uh, we have to uh, clean out the house, get the garage cleaned out from the remains that are left. We're slowly doing that. We're not rushing ourselves. We do not want to get another yard sale thing going to where we got burned out doing that. And we don't have very much. At that point, we'll focus on the appearance of the house uh, and, of course, the garage see if there's something that just stands out that maybe might help with the sale of the house but quite honestly uh, the realtor wants to have an open house right away we told her we're trying to get all our stuff out of there and that we'll let her know uh, in the meantime I've got some stuff I'm trying to do here to the RV before we take off out of here and uh, who knows where we'll go at that point but yeah we're, we're just taking our time uh, 
I know that's not a lot of excitement, but that's what we're doing. Okay, so I went ahead and fired this up and turned on the air conditioning inside the RV. Uh, of course, this door is closed at this point, and there is a considerable amount of heat that's coming out of this that wasn't before, so that's really good. Now, I'll have to say that our household current inside the house isn't near as good as what this generator offers. Uh, it was 80 degrees in here. I have the 15,000 BTU air conditioner on. And I do have it set at 67, so it's slowly making its way to that temperature. So let's go back out here. And hopefully, the amount of fuel that's in this extended tank will keep this thing running for a while. I really don't know how much is in here, but eh, not very much. Probably a gallon or so. So hopefully that's uh, that's going to do the job for the time being. Okay, so Heidi's here selling stuff on Facebook Marketplace. She loves that, don't you? Yeah, well, that's a little bit of pain in the butt. A little bit of money but, here, a little bit of yeah. money there. We're yeah, trying to get rid of stuff. We're not doing much, so might as well just, if we're sitting here, we might as well put right. stuff on there. Right. Don't take much effort. Yeah, which is kind of our life at this point. Yeah. Doesn't take much effort. It's pretty much oh, everything we, we do. do but... So I don't know if you can hear. It's out. It's in the background. I'm shooting video for the generator boxes. Now, a lot of you guys don't understand. I, don't know, I should say understand, but a lot of you guys don't know that I installed those generator boxes on the, the bumper back there. And we've been playing around trying to get it just right. And we're documenting the whole process as far as you know what we did and what was wrong how we made mistakes and how we're trying to correct them so uh, I thought I'd jump on here real quick uh, Heidi's waiting for a desk to sell we got somebody coming to pick up my old computer desk the one that I sat at and did all my video editing all these years and uh, anyway you can hear the noise in the background let's go take a look at that little rattle rattle or not so little rattle rattle <laughs> or not so little rattle rattle all right so there's the desk um our clam shelter we love the clam shelter don't we Heidi it's very nice it's, look at look at us where we're sitting yeah it is awesome 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 and we've talked about this in the past guess what else it is heavy and takes up a lot of space and we decided that we're going to sell it and if we want one in the future we'll buy another one but in the meantime man just look how big it is we we love it it, it is the most awesome outdoor piece that we got so what do we do instead we ordered one of these uh awning screens which i'll talk about in the future and it's just a screen to help with the sun if it's coming in at a weird angle in the morning but I'm kind of sad that that's going to go. We do have it on Facebook Marketplace. It's roughly a hundred and I don't know, hundred and twenty dollars less than what we paid for it. Uh, but we'll see what happens there. Good morning, YouTube, and the experiment is ended. <laughs> so obviously, all I needed to do was open up these vents for some more circulation of heat going out. The intake so far seems to be fine. Um, I do need to open up that exhaust pipe hole a little bit more so I can push the generator further this way. But we ran this all night long. Let me go ahead and turn it off so I can talk to you. We ran this all night long, and this gas tank is, oh, wow, uh, right there, right there's the level. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I wanted to bounce it. So we put five gallons in this uh, last night, and it's a six gallon tank. Uh, so that's how much is left out of all that, which is good. And again, uh, with this loosened up, this strap loosened up, this thing purred. I mean, it, it, the intrusion into the uh, 
trailer as far as noise and vibration is very minimal I mean it's I mean I sat in the chair up just on the other side of the window last night and uh, watched TV and we didn't have to have the volume up loud or anything like that so basically I gotta figure out what I want to do here to make this a little bit better as far as cosmetic wise um, I'm sure I could bend these down uh, to make it I don't know a little bit different I gotta get this uh, this sealant off of here um, to make it look a little better too but I think that that's pretty much all I needed to do this whole time yeah morning voice so we've got a few more things to do here uh, at the uh, at the house obviously plus I got some awning parts coming in today I want to do a, an awning fix which hopefully isn't going to be such a big deal we'll, we'll see about that we're gonna we're gonna patch it up as best as possible <laughs> yeah we're moving right along one of the things that you might be running into or you may run into uh, as far as whenever you're starting to get to be full-time is cleaning up messes constantly <laughs> especially when you're just starting and that's that's it uh, so here's what I'm talking about uh, when you're camping and when you go out casually uh, to keep everything nice and neat and tidy not a big deal uh, you just bring along certain things um, even when we had loaded up with some unbelievable amount of paraphernalia to be brought camping with us um, we've always had places for everything to go and everything looked relatively neat alright so fast forward to what we're doing now and trying to cram ourselves into this RV we find ourselves cleaning out the house uh, finding stuff that we want to take for sure don't get me wrong we've thrown away a lot of stuff but stuff like deodorant extra deodorant you know that we bought in the past maybe some cologne maybe some perfume uh, dishes in general like for whatever reason Heidi loves this big bowl so now we got to find a place for it <laughs> so and, and don't get me wrong I'm I'm even worse myself so this is what happens we will straighten all this up inside the RV today this will all be straightened up at some point and then as we go in the house and find more stuff that and again we are very critical of what we're bringing and, but there's still stuff that's got to come out here we then have to come back out and find places for it and not only that you're living in the RV too so we're trying to get into an, a routine that makes sense I've so, already taken mm, probably a basket full of clothes out of here right right and it wasn't, I've already taken it wasn't supposed to be that way a bunch of bathroom stuff out we, I haven't taken any kitchen stuff out because I'm pretty much other than that bowl. <laughs> and I'm actually bringing glasses, glass to drink out of. Right. Um, if they survive. She has a problem drinking out of plastic cups. I, I don't. like drinking out of plastic cups. I don't. I don't at all. But I just want you guys to be aware that you're going to have to clean. You're just going to be cleaning. You're going to be cleaning your house. Then you're going to be cleaning the RV. And then you're staying in the RV. So, in our case. So now we're cleaning up again. I, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you are saying, oh, don't, just throw it all away and you can buy it when you're out on the road. Why would you want to get to the campsite and Michael don't want to leave and I don't have any deodorant? Right. So now, or let's say dish soap or food or anything um, I'm trying to you know like right now we're eating on paper plates so we don't use so much water at home um, which isn't a problem right now because all right gray but, water is not an issue at all and even the black water we I mean we have we can pump it out but still she's trying to practice just conserving yeah especially whenever we're in places that we aren't gonna be for a longer period of time but there's a lot of stuff that we we know we want to bring and it's not it's not extraneous I mean this is 
must need must have stuff it's not like we're saying other than kidding around about the bowl it's not like we're saying oh i have to have that there's no way i can live without it um it, this is stuff that we've worked into our normal routine you know and and yes that is a house routine it's not a it's not a an rv routine but we know we're going to use it again something as simple as a shredder now we'll get off all that topic just to let you know you're going to be messy your house is going to be messy your rv is going to be messy even when you clean it up you're going to be bringing more stuff out to mess it up you're going to be living in it you're going to be messing it up that way so we've got to get into a routine and we're learning all that this is all going to be new as far as the way we handled it uh, or the way we move forward and we handle it moving forward i should say so something else we had to do today something else that you may want to have with you um, we don't have our marriage certificate um, we want to make sure we have that just in case there's some sort of an issue uh, health wise on the road um, I mean not to be morbid but you know life support pulling the plug living will all that stuff um, you may need something like that uh, secondly um, titles stuff for your rv and your vehicles so that's what we're doing today is we're actually going up to the uh title bureau then we're going to get the title for the rv now it's electronic everybody everybody has you know that stuff but um we're getting the title for the uh rv that you know, obviously we own um you guys just joined on with us it's all paid off it's all paid in full uh, we just never got the title. They said that if we want the title, we could go to our lo local title agency and get it. Same with the truck. You know, we, of course, it's all taken care of. So we've got that. Actually, they send the title. I'm not sure why why they don't send the title for the RV, but for the truck, they sent the title. Um, which again, I I find that odd. Uh, they're both vehicles. What what's the difference? But we want to have those on in you know in our hands or secured somewhere I should say, um, maybe not necessarily taking it along with us, but we do want to have it secured somewhere uh, moving forward. And you know if we're not in Ohio, it's it would be awful tough to get those things. So we're trying to get that now. So that's what we're doing today. We're running around doing that stuff. Okay, so Heidi's over here trying to clean up her mess, aren't you, honey? <laughs> I told you right at the beginning. And it was dark out and I couldn't really see. It's really dark out what we're doing. We're burning uh, cardboard. We're just burning all the cardboard boxes. We're cleaning out the, the shed here. And Heidi said, well, how it all started was she found some Perrine weed control. Some kind of a weed control. I don't know what it was. And she thought, which I would have too, that if she sprinkles the weed control... Um, I'm gonna to try to lighten it up a bit here, but if she sprinkles the weed control out here for you, the the, the driveway, you know, the less chance of grass growing and in, 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 in the driveway, which there's not a lot, but there is some of it. So, well, that fire kicked up big time. So, anyways, she put it down, and as I'm over there burning, I told her, she says, "Well, this stuff kind of smells bad, this weed killer." And I said, "Yeah, well, maybe it means it's still working. I don't know." So a little bit later she said, why don't I pull the gray water hose? That's what we have hooked up here is a gray water hose. She goes, why don't I pull the gray water hose? And at that point, I can use the hose to hose down that weed killer. And um, it'll maybe the soap in the gray water will, will kill it. Because we don't have any food or anything in the gray water, just showers. That's it and dish, you know, dishes. But we wipe out all our dishes. Washing our hands. Right, washing our hands too. So she comes over here and she says, which one is it? And I said, it's the one in the back. Now, granted, you can't read anything over here. You can't see anything over here. So I said, it's the one in the back. Now, I also told her, you can read it. I said, it says right there. Well, she was right because, again, I know you guys can't see this, but there's a decal that's right here and it says gray water holding tank and sewer outlet connection let me see if we can get the lights to come on for you so you can read this a little better okay there we got the floodlights on so you can see here 
there's a sticker fresh water drain obviously for the fresh water tank and then this says gray water holding tank sewer outlet connection so she's reading that because i told her i said hey there's there's a sticker it tells you which one it is and there's not and there's n not i mean it that that sticker gray water holding tank that's where the gray water holding tank is no it's not oh. the gray water holding tanks back here okay but that's where the water comes so from. Anyways, you can get the idea that she says, boy, this stuff stinks. And I said, yeah. I said, well, you know, it is gray water, and it does have the ability to stink a little bit. I never smoked gray water like that before. And she's like, no, it smells pretty bad. I'm like, eh, it's just your imagination. I'm always working with it. I'm the one that usually empties it. Even though she's there helping me, um, I'm the one that smells it usually. And I, <laughs> I'm over here, and I'm burning fire, and I'm like walking over i said boy you're right that is bad that's boy, i said boy that stinks really bad and she, and in the meantime she's got it still running out of the hose and i go wait a minute i said that is not gray water i said that's black water it's gotta be so, so i hurried up i ran up here and here she pulled the black water hose and we've been using this bathroom i mean we've been full on using this bathroom just like normal and it's three quarters the way full of it's black really water a minute and a half yeah it was if that yeah it was basically about a minute and a half so i told her i said oh my god i said oh, hopefully the the hose the garden hose didn't get clogged up with whatever's coming out so yeah, we, we closed it she pulled the gray and it's running fine we now put on septic is it lime L lime I, we have that in there we have lime in there mm -hmm. okay we'll go pour it on there because yeah. that'll kill any bacteria but that is funny. I said, I got to put this on camera. And she goes, no, don't do that. <laughs> I said, it's funny. <laughs> it was a mistake. I mean, you see how dark it was. Here, you want to see something funny, though, about these floodlights? Uh, there's rubber gloves in the RV. I think this door's still unlocked. Um, there might. There's rubber gloves in this door here, Hyde. But anyways, watch this. You guys are going to, it's going to crack you up. Ready? Watch, I'm going to talk to my slide. Let's see what happens. Alexa, turn off floodlight. <laughs> it's because the Alexa is sitting by my bed. <laughs> that way we can check for intruders or whatever just by me turning on cameras and yelling at our Alexa inside there. We got tired of not having Alexa inside the RV. That's one thing we're going to have to get used to. So the, uh, that vanity mirror is really heavy. It's old leaded glass. This is from Heidi's uh vanity that she has downstairs that she's had a long time guys come in to pick it up tomorrow it's a neighbor ladies actually yeah yeah we, tore her, we bought her house my parents bought the neighbor's house and tore it down and the vanity was in there it was an old house they had they didn't even have they had indoor plumbing but it was um a uh Burner. incinerator it was a toilet incinerator in there that's all it was because all those houses down you know her mom's house included those are all cottages. Those are only supposed to be seasonal cottages, but everybody made them at the homes over the years. So anyways, we got some parts coming in for all kinds of stuff um, for me to do projects. But in the meantime, you can see what's left in the garage here to clean up. Not a lot. Um, it looks like a lot, but really it's not a lot. And uh, the house is kind of the same way. And the basement is pretty sparse at this point. Um, but we're, we're moving along. I just thought I'd check in with you guys. Uh, for the uh, toilet issue of the year. <laughs> I think that's so funny. <laughs> so today is, uh, the, the, let me think how to say this. The word for today, what's the word for today? Stressful. <laughs> and stuff. Stressful and stuff. S and S. Same mm, other day. So our living room uh, has kind of been a staging area. And although these totes are relatively, well, that's empty and the next one's empty, uh, we expect them to be full. But we're finding that even the craziest, smallest stuff that we planned on bringing with us, <laughs> we're running out of space. Uh, this is just stuff that we have, like, in a file cabinet that we've always, we utilize, we use this stuff. And I don't know, maybe we won't use this stuff whenever we're, we're going to have to, we're going to have to redo all this again. We're going to have to figure it out. Uh, we're basically, um, Heidi just called and spoke with our daughter to warn her that we're bringing over a lot of stuff. 
Uh, we're also going to pay them some money so we don't feel so bad. Because we were, Heidi said, what do you think about storage? And we've been talking about that for a while. And we swore we weren't going to do storage. We, we said, uh, no storage, no storage, no storage. Except what we were bringing to our daughter's house. So if you don't have a family member that you guys can utilize, uh, like we do, um, I think I storage, storage. I think I if don't... you can't get if you can't get rid of your stuff uh, or your personal keepsakes and things like that, you do want to put it in storage until you really you need, you need to think about it. Right. I, I mean, the one thing that I want you guys to be aware of is that we literally uh, are throwing away stuff that we didn't plan on throwing away. Um but we're going to get rid of the stuff that we're thinking, that, oh, yeah, uh, we'll put that in the RV because we use it every day. Uh, we're going through it. I think you're going to have to go through this stuff over and over and over again. We're we're finding that out. Um, I don't know. I think that once we get everything in that we think that we're going to use in the truck and the camper that we need to take it up and get it weighed <laughs> oh yeah yeah right i mean that, that that'll uh get us uh to take a second look i i, I mean we've already done that you know to a, a small small avenue of looking around um i've already said that i've taken lots of clothes out i threw bars of soap out that it was okay for weekend camping and things like that but yeah you definitely have to need to travel lighter if you're I mean I get that you want to take stuff with you All right I've given up a lot of stuff um I'm not sad about it or anything but Michael needs to give up a little bit of more stuff because <laughs> he's got a lot of stuff and I gave up stuff for him so now Heidi's looking to see if we won the lottery back 12. in 2012. <laughs> I don't think that. I don't think we did. Never know. Might be millionaire. Oh, she just threw away our millions. So um, to give you an idea, this is all of our son's stuff. This is all going to our daughter's house. So I would think we have this much ourselves. Yeah. But really, we only have three totes that we really need. See, we could take, I mean... Yeah. I, I wouldn't do it, but we could just take and throw away everything else. But I don't want to do that because some of this stuff they might want. I mean, there's a whole bunch of, like, uh, heirloom stuff in there. Yeah. I mean, there's heirlooms in that box. Grandfather. Yeah, my grandfather uh, that g he gave me um, that I kind of cherish. I mean, like his retirement, his gold retirement watch, his gold pin set from his retirement. Um, but I've got other things, too. Let me show you in here. Yeah, like my uniform. What do I do with my army uniform? <laughs> you know? Uh, but here, here's my grandfather's machinist tool chest, and it has his machinist tools in there. I mean, there's little badges and stuff inside that toolbox. It's like, I like Ike badges and things. I mean, it, you know, I, I don't know what to do with it because the only person that would want this would be our grandson. Of course, he's an infant. And again, my grandfather's old shotgun that's wrapped up over there. This is the last group of clothes that's going into the RV. And it, there's a lot. Uh, we have a tendency to think that once we figure out what we're wearing and not wearing, we're going to be getting rid of stuff. But we need to be out there on the road doing that. Isn't that right? Yes. Yeah. And I think that's the same with the rest of the stuff. Now, as far as rooms, uh, the bathroom's all cleared out. Um Everything that's in here is pretty much going to be left for the, the next people. I mean, I, I'm sure if they don't need it, they can throw it away. I don't care. And then this room's empty. It's completely empty. I went ahead and put this door back on. Uh, this door has been off for years. This door hasn't been on here. I can't even remember when the last time was that it was on. It's been in the basement all this time. But anyways, Heidi had already straightened up this room and cleaned it up. So it, it's this room's ready to go uh, for... Whoever decides to look at the house. And again, the bathroom. Everything is cleaned out in here. She's leaving the pictures on the wall. These are pictures from wild flyer, uh, flowers that grew outside our house that she took 
uh, with an old old camera so as far as this room here we're pretty close right where yeah. uh, this mattress is nasty old dirty oh, so we're gonna definitely yeah Heidi bought some cheap packaging tape that was a mistake it, it's <laughs> the same brand but yeah it's not good so basically the uh, bed we need to uh, disassemble that or put the I'm sorry put the headboard on it take pictures of it we got to get rid of the mattress of uh, the box springs too right or is the box springs okay i think the box spring is okay but the, the mattress, mattress is was, junk it was junk from yeah from the very beginning and it's a serta and we paid a decent amount of money yeah. for that that was our mistake must be different levels of serta so anyways um this room will be done then after the bowling equipment and and i get to take the machinist toolbox we like i said we were looking at how much stuff we're bringing over. Again, there's all our son's stuff. The guitars and stuff's going to his grandmother's house. But we were looking at all the stuff going to them. And I told her, I said, I think we're going to scare them. We're just going to be coming in with tote after tote after tote and box after box. I don't know. The army fatigues, I'll probably, I don't know, maybe we'll leave them for our grandson. He can throw them away. I can bring them to an army surplus. I don't even think they take that stuff anymore. Um, but this is just kind of trash. And as far as the the kitchen, um, I think you've got most of the cabinets cleaned out, right? Yeah, just the medicine with the raw medicine. Yeah, we got to find a place for all the medicines in the, the new RV and the canned goods, Which obviously. Whittled down pretty good. Ooh, I see hot dog chili sauce. That looked yeah. be good today. And then this room here needs touched hard. Just to let you know. Hey, I found the the our match. Hey, come look at this. Heidi's face will change. What'd you find? The bed stand that oh goes to gosh. the bed. You stole it. We we thought that our daughter had it. We were looking. Is we have the instructions. Everybody? We have the instructions for that bed that's in there. Yeah. And I said, what happened to the bed stand that went with it? And she goes, oh, I think one of our kids took it. And I said, well, where'd they? Uh, they ain't got it. <laughs> there it is. So anyways, uh, the printer we're going to sell. Uh, Give it more. Yeah, it's, I think so. Alexa notification. One new notification from Amazon Shopping. For Heidi, RV awning easy will arrive today. Cool. We got a new screen for the awning for the RV. Um, we repaired the RV to some extent yesterday. Had to do some fabrication, but we got it done. So um, I've got to sell this monitor, uh, which is very, very nice. Um, and... I'm taking the green screen in case we do any of that. That's easy to slip behind a couch or under the bed or something. That's very thin and lightweight. That's a portable green screen. It's like six foot by nine foot whenever it unfolds. So I might use that for videos in the future. Look for that. I got to go through all these boxes. Um, I'm the only keeping the box definitely for my tablet. Let me keep that over here. Uh, the wise cameras, that's going to go to my daughter. Um, they get all the camera system, but of course we're going to be utilizing the cameras while we're on the road. I got to get rid of the speakers. I got to get rid of the shredder. Again, I still have to do the video on this. It'll go in the back of the truck, I think. But most of this stuff, um, I have to go through it and store it. You know, I, I'm looking at pictures here of me and my sister. Here, you want to? Here, here's something to laugh at. Ready? You guys want to laugh at this one? <laughs> oh my! <laughs> All right, so Heidi found 1995 Christmas. How did we get hold of that? They left it here. It was my grandparents. Yeah, right. Because it just says Mercedes. Right, just before our son was born. Mercedes only a couple months old. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. Uh, of course, the router will be here for the entire time that we're on the road until the house sells, which it's an awesome router. It's some big monster router. It does a good job. I don't know if I can use that in the RV. You guys make the comment down below. Anybody that's full-timing whenever they're out, do you guys have your full-size router in the RV? I mean, this thing would be great. I mean, the signal is incredible off this thing, and it's fast, but I don't know. Is that needed? The only way I'm, uh, the only reason I'm including you guys in this is because 
whenever we see people downsize, it's kind of fascinating to us, the, the whole process they have to go through. And right now, uh, we're in a messy process, but we're like in the final, final stages of getting rid of stuff. And I'll tell you, it's nice. I mean, how do you feel about that? I feel pretty good about it. You like it? I mean, it, to, to the end. Yeah, to think that we're almost completely done. I, I mean, I'm fascinated by that whole process. I think that's really cool. So let us get back to work, and that's the update for now. So we got some more rain. What a surprise. Uh, we've got a showing. Somebody's coming to check out the house. So it kind of sucks. We can't open the shed and leave it open. But glad to have somebody show or come for the show. Uh, we straightened it up in here. You can see, like I said, we don't have very much stuff left. So this is going to Goodwill. The water containers, uh, maybe, if we got some space for them, it'd be kind of nice for drinking water. Heidi's real big on that, right? Yeah. So, what do you think about the way the kitchen looks right now? <laughs> Look how bare it is. To think that there's nothing in the cabinets, are there? Just a few things that I just put in there, like some of the food and our medicine is still in the cabinet and some stuff that seriously, oh i forgot to bring those out for the garage sale oh yeah yeah dale earnhardt stuff we bought that back we were married i think right 90s i think we, were, we might have even uh, still been dating so there's still stuff got to go to goodwill um we might give a lot of stuff up to uh i don't know how do you, maybe how do you have a little yard sale? Uh, maybe how do you have a little yard sale? <laughs> There's a lot of stuff here that... Right, right. So I got to go donate my bowling stuff somewhere. And then uh, our son's guitars are going to his grandmother's house with that amp. Um, our uh, I was going to. daughter's getting that 4K monitor, or son-in-law. All this stuff, as I mentioned the other day, the, all this stuff is going to <laughs> their house, right? And these totes are empty right now, right? These, no, those are full. these are full. Those are ours. Okay, that stuff that's going to their house. Yeah. Okay. There's, this one just has our taxes in it, which is very not full at all. This stuff is keepsake stuff. Which will go into a tote. Yeah. Right. One of these totes. Which these totes are all empty. Yeah. Yeah, those three are empty, so we're good there. Of course, the chair's going to. Uh, the RV, this is going to the curb, and then coming in here, boy, we got a lot of stuff in here yet. <laughs> we got the our router. <laughs> the bathroom, there's nothing in here other than nothing. Right, nothing in there bars. the cabinets, there's oh, nothing. The towel. The, oh yeah, the, the towel, rag. that's it, which will be a rag. Mm -hmm. And this is shred. Now, if you guys don't know, which we didn't know, um, like our local UPS, they're associated with this company that does shredding. So uh, they shred and by the pound. Uh, instead of burning all that paper little by little or shredding it piece by piece ourselves, we'll take it to a secure facility that shreds. And then, of course, our, our vacuum. How do you, she'll sell that, give it to my daughter or something. But, yeah, this, this is it too. So you can see how empty it is. Wonder if we have anything in the attic. <laughs> we do need to get up there. Well, I don't want to dick around with. Uh, we still need to get up there and make sure that we didn't put something up there that. I don't think. I think there's a Christmas tree up there. Oh. That's it. I just like the look. I'll look for myself. You can. You do I that. I know how to do. I know how to get up there. Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> so this is this is it. I um, mean, essentially. Oh no, that's not true. Let's go to the dungeon. Which right now the dungeon has uh, some water coming in the dungeon because it's our basement. We disclose that. Yeah, we disclose it. All you got to do is just disclose that the basement gets a little bit wet during rain and stuff. And you can see, this is the extent of it right here. And this is all we do. We just turn a fan on and it dries it out. Um, now the wall, of course, looks pretty bad, but it's because we've never scraped it. We've never done anything. We've never painted it nothing we just this i mean for 20 years we haven't done anything with this wall i'm sure if we scraped it down to bare block and put some of that dry lock on there um it would 
you know, it would fix it up and make it look real nice. But that's for the next owners. Let them do it. For the most part, uh, the basement stays dry. Um, an area of concern, I guess, sometimes, I gotta fix these cords, is sometimes in here, same deal. Now, Heidi did try to doctor this up years ago, but whatever the novelty wore off or something, I'm not sure. So, let's see what, again, of course, my water tank for the back of the truck, that's, I gotta still do that. Uh, all this stuff stays, this is a lot of stuff for like the washing machine, the ice maker that's upstairs, there's some parts in there. Um, I don't even know what else. Of course, the freezer refrigerator stays, or the freezer, the deep freeze stays. And I got to put the tell, uh, the fishing poles in the in the garage, or in the uh, truck, when I'm talking about the garage. And then the uh, brush for cleaning the RV. Um, we're thinking about sticking that somewhere because we like using that for clothes when we're doing laundry. Uh, these boxes are all trash. And I think there might be some stuff in here. There's some keepsake stuff here, I believe. Uh, this is just painting crap. There's the box for the printer. Uh, there's the box for, I believe, my computer. And the box for Heidi's computer. Uh, this box is empty for the most part. Got some uniforms that need to go somewhere. And then this bed goes back to her mom's. It's a bunk bed. She has the matching one at her house. Again, this box has some stuff in it, but I think for the most part that is trash. And then our Christmas tree, the aluminum Christmas tree that was from the 60s or whatever. That's It's been a long time. The pump stays, that lamp goes, uh, that bowling bag goes. Anyways, you guys get the idea. There's just little bits and pieces there. All these totes are empty. Um, so we've got plenty of totes to go store stuff, but really we, we don't have much stuff. I mean, we really don't. I think some of those linens might go with this. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, but not all of them. Hell, the whole bottom half is curtains in there. Oh, I'm carrying around this laundry that needs to go in the wash. Silly me. So that's about it. I mean, we're, we're in pretty good shape here as far as stuff that's left so i thought i'd show you guys we're just a few more steps now we found something that we're running into a problem with let me fix these cords and i'll talk about it okay so now that is tidied up downstairs uh, we still have a little while till the realtors come or the uh, people walking through and one of the things that we discussed with our patrons uh, briefly was how um we're, we're Heidi and I got different person. Let me say that we have the same personality when it comes to certain things and both of us lack in a certain area. So I'll tell you because you may run into the same thing and that is just motivation. Um, you know, we don't have any definite plans until November. Well, we're only September. What? What's the September now? The 8th, I think. September 8th? No. 7th. 7th? So September 7th. I think um, is a long time before November. Yeah, I think that we need to try to get, I don't know, something done, but the problem is. I was in here putting some curtains up and I looked at my phone and I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. Right. Today, this is the, about the third time that it was that day to, for somebody to come and walk through the house. Right, right. So I, I've been here and, you know, we've been lax. We haven't been doing much in here. And I'm like, oh, this is our motivation, I think. Well, right. Now, and here's the thing. This house was, it was destroyed looking. It looked like a tornado had come through it just 40 minutes ago. <laughs> but because we know somebody's coming, we have a tendency to be able to put together and get our teamwork rolling to where everything's straightened out. Still, it's not perfect, but nonetheless, it's acceptable compared to what it was. So uh, you can ask Heidi, that's why I kind of get the camera on her, as far as what we end up doing, knowing that we don't really have to straighten everything up. <laughs> we relax. Yeah, we just kick back because, I, I mean, it's bad. We Our motivation isn't as good as it, sh it should be. Well, the thing is, is our next step, 
we have too many loose ends in here. So our right. next step is to get the loose ends all tied up and then go on where they need to go. And then we need to load our truck up and my car up. But my car's not here. And I was going to do that today. Take all the stuff to my mom's, like our son's guitars and his amp. So it's not in our daughter's basement. So, and then a couple other things that I was wanting to give my mom. So I think now that this little realtor visit maybe will kick us into gear. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's exactly I, right. I'd really like to be here up until it's sold, but that, I don't think that's going to be possible. Well, I don't know why we do it. You can ask Heidi, maybe she knows. But again, whenever there's no real push, no real hard motivation, and would we like to be somewhere other than our driveway camping right now? Yeah, absolutely, but it's convenient for us to be here for the work that needs to be done, and we, we, we're not slaving ourselves. We're, we're taking our time, and again, I think that that would be different if we had to bust our butt because we had a deadline or something. Um, now let's let's see what Heidi thinks about this if we had a deadline and we needed to be out of here by a determined amount of days what do you think that would be what how many days do you think we could get this cleared out oh three or four completely clear see I don't even think that many but <laughs> well it's probably some unforeseen stuff that I don't know about but yeah yeah, I think we could have this place completely done, cleaned out, ready for the next person yeah. in that about about that amount of time. So we'll go with that. But I just wanted to touch base, so did Heidi, and tell you what's going on as far as our motivation and what we plan on doing here and why uh, it's taking so long. Because a lot of people are wanting updates and uh, I have a, I've shot some video, which you've already seen. It's what this clip's attached to. But yeah, all right. Well, we'll go back to lounging around. We have about, I don't know, 45 minutes before we have to get out of here. Uh, and uh, then we'll determine what we want to do. But I, I think both of us might get motivated enough to go actually want to do something. And uh, maybe, maybe we'll take care of all this stuff faster than we thought. But that's, I'm not holding my breath. Ooh, bless ya. Stirring up the dust. Double, we got one more in you? There shouldn't be that much dust in here. I've been swept 20 times. 99 times. Right. <laughs> All right, we're out of here. Guess what I just did? Got up from a nap. <laughs> it's a nappy kind of day. Oh, a nappy kind of day is an understatement. So we have a real flood watches or warnings. Oh, I can see the backyard's flooded. Yeah. How nice. Uh, the thing is, we haven't had rain for so long, I, I can't say anything bad about this. Um, you can see about there in the distance. That's not bad. But considering that this is kind of drought weather, we've been kind of like in a semi-drought for such a long time. I, uh, for you guys that have all been asking, I put some silicone across the top here or some kind of a, I can't remember what it was now, some kind of a flex seal. And... It does not leak at all, so we don't have any water coming in the RV whatsoever, which is nice. I took a nap. I went to bed at 4.14, and it's it's two hours. I took a two-hour nap. You know that? <clears throat> yeah. Hattie was asleep. That's why I took a nap. I don't know if you can tell at the tree. The leaves are changing already. Oh, they are? Yeah. Ugh. I don't know why. It hasn't been cold enough. I, no, I can't see any of that. I don't have my sunglasses on. <laughs> Whatever, my color glass. So it's wet on the porch here. You can kind of see. It's pretty much wet everywhere. Um, like up in Cleveland, they had over three inches of rain. Well, we've had, you know what's funny? We have more than that. Oh, yeah. We're supposed to have two to four. So we're kind of excited because our showing looked like it went pretty well um I'll turn on some lights so you can see us a little bit or see me i just head downstairs already Whew. so um 
nice thing is we have cameras <clears throat> I've said this before we have cameras all over the house so we could kind of watch what was going on and it was a, a younger person and they looked at everything they looked at the house uh, some of these people are tire kickers we've seen come through on the showing but you know it doesn't make a difference how interested they are uh, we you know we'll hear a final word on this eventually um, you know to where maybe they they actually want to buy it however I uh, just wanted to share the news that this last showing looked a little bit more promising but we've been in the RV <laughs> uh, just kind of stuck and this really you know it's I, I don't know what the th let me tell you the kind of stuff that we go through um, occasionally just thinking about things sometimes overthinking things because we're not out there doing it we're kind of stuck here um, to some extent under our own circumstances we're kind of stuck here but we had uh, actually saw some old pictures uh, I don't know if you guys have like Amazon photos or maybe it's under Google photos or one or the other I'm sure we have both and it'll tell you uh, this day in whatever year one of the pictures that came up was the old blue truck uh, a blue and white truck I should say and the old RV and I was telling Heidi boy you know simpler times uh, then I was telling her you know how much less we would be taking with us which of course isn't a bad thing and I have a feeling we're gonna be downsizing what we're taking with us um, but of course we need to we need to get going first and you know out traveling to make sure that uh, we're, we're not I don't think we need this stuff honestly I really don't it's just we, we've lived a certain way for so long it's so hard to to change the way that you do things but getting back to what I was saying um, I talked about boy if we you know if we had that other RV um, we would have already been out there doing it easily because we would have had spent uh, you know less money we would have only we would have had an extra roughly uh, seventy thousand uh, dollars to our names um, but we'd be in that smaller trailer and the, the the older truck um, and who knows what have been you know repairs and stuff like that but um, we, we kind of reminisced and said boy it was so nice you know pulling that little truck uh, that little trailer with the truck and being able to back into places so much easier and it was just you know you, you do so much more you know as far as traveling wise and I am thankful for today because today with this rain that has been going on for literally hours and hours the rain started um, let's see we picked up Heidi's car she had the interior cleaned and the outside waxed to make it a little bit easier to sell um, we picked up her car at uh, 2 2 o'clock and it had already been raining for roughly two hours I think at that point and here we are at uh, you know almost 7 at 657 and the rain is just barely subsiding finally and on the radar map it's kind of showing that too so we've been inside the RV the whole time and it kind of reminded me the relief that we had when we used to have a tent and we finally got into a pop-up and then we got trapped in the pop-up with the kids for an entire day of rain uh, just like we had got trapped in the tent for an entire day with the kids to make us realize how much we liked the pop-up but then after the pop-up trip with the kids and we got into our old RV that uh, Terry camper um, that just reminded us boy you know we got stuck in the rain with that like today was a perfect example of why that RV is really really very comfortable for us and um, could be considered on the small side for what we're wanting to do to some uh, could be considered a little bit too big uh, for some people um, but for example I was sitting in the recliner I'm sorry the rocker <laughs> I was sitting in the rocker I was watching some TV 
uh, we was having something to eat. Uh, Heidi, uh, she laid down on the couch, put her feet up. She was watching TV, and then she went ahead and she started falling asleep. I was starting to get a little bit tired about, I don't know, 45 minutes into her nap. <laughs> so I went ahead and just shut off the TV, uh, went into the bedroom, laid down, and, you know, took a great nap. And in the meantime, Heidi had woke up. She uh, came to the house because she needed to do some stuff, but she could have just easily, you know, stayed in the RV and maybe watched some TV or whatever she wanted to do. And we were not interfering with each other at all, um, where the Terry camper could have been the same way, but we just get to stretch our legs a little bit more in this one when we run into days like this. I try to tell everybody, which I'm sure you guys know by now, um, you know this because you're RVers, you know, we technically shouldn't be living in our RV. We shouldn't be you know, surviving, you know, day to day to day in our RV. The RV is just the place we, we prepare our foods, we stay dry when it rains, we stay warm when it's really cold. Uh, it's a place to sleep, it's the place to use the bathroom, um, and of course, it's the place, you know, for us to change our clothes and all that. Our living is supposed to happen outside the RV. That's the whole idea behind the traveling things, you know, that you just travel and, and you're living outside the RV for the most part. You're not living in the RV necessarily. But today, we definitely lived in the RV and uh, it passed with flying colors. Man, we had so much rain the other day and we've been running around a little bit today. But I uh, wanted to get guys up to date. What's happening? Heidi's in there, kind of taking a nap. But it looks like this guy didn't finish her wax. She got her card detailed, so it'd make it easier to sell. But what is this? What is going on? Oh, it's all scuffed. I have to take a little black paint to that. Yeah, her car looks pretty good. Whoops. Now it's probably going to beep. So, anyways, um, you'll see a review on this eventually. Uh, and what size I've got and everything else so far pretty good, but I'm getting inside the truck here To get my little temperature gauge There you are I use this to check the brake temperature and all that good stuff On the truck here comes Heidi She decided to uh, bless us with her presence but anyways, yeah, I picked up one of these bad boys, the Hughes Autoformer, and this makes a difference, but I want to see how hot it is because it's working hard. 117 to 121 degrees. Seems a little hot. And let's see, you guys can't see it, but it says 121. And look, it's disconnected. It says E2 hide. Yeah, what's those colors on here? Because I can't see those colors. They're all yellow. wonder why it went to red and it says E2. Here, hold this. Mm -hmm. So, this is something that I was screwing around with. And plugging it into... Look at, look at the adapters. Look how funny this is. 110 to 30. 30 to 50. 50 through there. 50 through there and then 50 to 30 and then 30 through this cord to 50 <laughs> so I gotta see what's going on here um, I don't know why that just shut off but I did get all kinds of notification we had the air conditioning running with the auto former and uh, yeah let's see what this says we got a message from Steve Gavinal. Steve, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Heidi's taking care of those messages. But this is kind of nice. This tell you what's going on here. And it says there's line 2 voltage error. Line 2 voltage error. Well, I don't know what that means. Here's what it says. Uh, line 2 voltage error. This is what I love about this thing. Your watchdog has determined that the voltage coming from the park has either exceeded 132 or dropped below 104. Well, I can tell you right now that we've been running for a long time here, 
and we haven't had any issues with the uh, voltage dropping at all. It's been running like at 120. So how many hours? About three. Yeah, three hours. So both too high of damp, you know, voltage or too low is damaging. So basically, it's waiting for the voltage to uh, drop, you know, to a range that's acceptable. And that makes sense because if I go back, which I can do that here, go home, we'll go back to the device. If you go back to this, it says. I'm at 123, but the second line is at 131. So that's what's going on there. It's being boosted past a point that is not acceptable. Which, again, makes sense because there's no demand going on inside the RV at all to drop that. Um, of course, it's disconnected at this point. But yeah, that makes sense. That's kind of cool. I, I think that's really awesome. So let me go ahead and disconnect the debobulator, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, change of plan. Basically, <laughs> uh, I forgot we only have a couple of warm days here, and I'm screwing around with the generator box and changing the pitch. I'm trying to see what it would be like if I made some modifications to these vents. Because I know when they're pointed straight out, when they were straight out, that it wouldn't overheat. Or I should say overheat. It, it just ran hot. Ran hotter than I wanted it to. So we're going to go ahead and run it like this. And uh, give the, the household electric a break. But yeah, it's... Uh, I think that will work. we got to figure out a way then to secure these if they do keep it, you know, to where it still cools off. I need to secure these vents so that they, they, you know, you can kind of see it's a little hokey there. So we'll just have to run some longer bolts with some spacers uh, into the box to keep them positioned like they are. Um, I don't like the way they look necessarily, but it does do a pretty good job. And as far as the exhaust pipe, I just have it pushed on there. I, I didn't clamp it on. You can see here's the clamp right here. But um, we'll have to see. I mean, the box is getting warm already. Really warm to the touch. So I might have to do something about that. Okay, so definitely need to work on these doors because when these flaps are out, they put out the most heat. Basically, there's no obstruction. And the box really doesn't get warm at all. Um, and the intake side doesn't get warm at all either. So that's definitely the answer. I just have to figure out a way to make some kind of protection for it for when we're traveling. Um, and of course, I don't like the way this looks, so that'll have to change. We'll have to take those off, and I'm going to have to figure out some kind of a door system, maybe using these again, but oh well. I wonder what this guy's problem is. Looks like he's dying. New day, new plan of action and we've got our second wind i guess you know that's funny how we get up and then our our whole attitude changes uh we we actually were sitting outside uh or actually heidi was sitting outside and i i came in and i told her i said why are we still here <laughs> there's there's no reason for us to be here other than this stuff so what i i believe we still need to work on the house some but we need to get all our stuff out. We need to get rid of the stress, which is all this stuff. Yeah. This stuff needs to go somewhere. Look at Heidi's hat collection. It's <laughs> ridiculous that this is only part of the hats that she owns. Yeah, and funny. I've told her she's got to get rid of them. So these totes are still empty, but we're finding stuff that needs to go to the RV. And I don't like it. 
I don't like it at all, and I think I'm going to have to go through again. This is everything that was out of my desk and on my desk, and I don't have a desk in the RV, so I've got to find a place for all this stuff, and I don't know how I feel about that. After I seen the, the amount that was accumulated, and we had already gone through this. I mean, I went through all this stuff and like, okay, I yeah, I, I would like to use this. Yeah, I still use this. After I got done, I'm like, that's too much stuff. There's just too much stuff there. So I don't know what's going to happen there. Uh, we're keeping these cases in case we get into a situation where we have to go somewhere with Wi-Fi, you know, that we need to find Wi-Fi with our laptops. Um, so we need those cases. And then, uh, of course, this is stuff. This is for our fifth wheel that Heidi's going to go buy. Um, this is a yaw sensor. If you guys don't know what that is, check it out. It's kind of cool. Came with the truck. And then underneath is a case with our gooseneck package. Again, uh, when we get our fifth wheel, that's where it'll go. What do you think, Hyde? Fifth wheel. Uh, uh, stressing me out over Yeah, see, she's actually thinking about it now. So um, the other thing is uh, we've got some stuff that has to, of course, go to our, our, our kid's house. And that is, again, we already went over all that. So I'm not going to rehash that. We got a lot of stuff that we're like giving away right now on uh, Facebook Marketplace. We just marked it as free. Uh, we'll see how many people come. Um, it's always a pain in the butt to deal with that, no matter, even if it's free, somehow they make it difficult. The, actually, the free stuff is more difficult to get rid of than the stuff that's for sale. Because a person that's going to buy something actually makes an effort into putting a plan together. When it's free, all these people can do is just imagine, oh my God, I can go get something for free. I need to, I need to figure out. Inconvenience them the, the most yeah. possible. So they're going to immediately try to establish that they want it. And that is at our expense because now they're. Well, when can I, how long will you hold it? And I don't know if I have the room for it. And I don't, I need a guy with my friend who's got a friend who has a brother who has a truck, maybe, that might be able to pick it up on Thursday of the second month of the new Chinese year. I mean, it's just the craziest stuff. And it's like, either you want it or you don't want it. I don't want to hear it. Just so this is the way to get around that if you guys are doing the same thing, and that is just telling them flat out, uh, hey, contact me when you're headed to my city, and I will send you the address at that point. That's the easiest way to do it. Because if not, you're going to send them their your address. You don't know if, when they're going to show up, if they're going to show up. If you don't give them your address, you know at least that they're going to be heading in this direction. Now, if it's in the same city as you, that's something entirely different. But, yeah, just crazy. So, right now, we're doing a couple of things. We have a bunch of old Army uniforms uh, that we're going to hang hang on to, just put in a tote for our grandson if he wants them later on. And if anything, just for a Halloween costume. <laughs> they want to use it for Halloween. And then the... Um, uh, the bowling stuff, I, I need to donate that to a bowling alley and, you know, pass it along. Maybe somebody can, uh, you know, don't have the money for a bowling ball. Uh, this guy that works the pro shop, you know, pro shops, what they do is they plug and refill the balls. You know, um, the, they'll, they'll plug all the holes. They'll re-drill them for the new owner. And, you know, they charge like maybe $30, $40 for the whole process, including the bowling ball. So that'd be nice. The pro shop could, you know, make some money off of that. And, of course, bowling bags, they're always popular. So we've got a, a new fire, let's say that. we got a new fire going, and um, it's basically called Let's Get Rid of This Stuff. So we've got three big groups, and I don't know if you guys will run into this or not, but in our case, we have, let's just call it a storage group. And that's the stuff that's going to our uh, our son-in-law's, our daughter's house, um, which we already supplied them with a whole bunch of shelves from the basement. They're all set up at the at their basement. We're going to um, put all of our stuff uh, that we're wanting the store, and then our son's wanting the store. Um, that's all going over to their place. We're going to pay them a yearly fee uh, for doing that. And I think I mentioned that before, but if I didn't. Um, 
we're going to give them some stuff and kind of use that as a barter system. Like I have a $590 4K monitor <laughs> that I'm not going to be able to use anymore. And I only bought it two years ago. So it's still very, very much uh, a, a good piece. And um, I told them, hey, I'll give that to you for the first year of use for the basement. And then we have uh, another group that is the get it into the RV group uh, or into the back of the truck group. So we have that kind of going on. And basically that stuff's being staged in the uh, garage. We may find out that we might have to get rid of some of that stuff, that it may not work. Um, but we want to get it out in the garage first to see if we have enough room. And, uh, of course, we have the stuff that's also going to the RV. Again, we'll get it to the RV, try to figure out what we have room for it. If not, we'll find a place for it somehow, uh, meaning that it may go to Goodwill itself. Then we also have what I just mentioned, the Goodwill pile. The pile that's going to the Goodwill Salvation Army, whoever will take it, the donation pile. So that's what's going on. Okay, without any help from Heidi whatsoever, our uh, awning is fixed. We got those legs. Do you remember how much I paid for them, Hyde? Yeah, sixty dollars. So we have a, a fully functioning awning with sides now, um, because us being idiots caused it to where I had to buy new legs. But yeah, the good news, us now, there. yeah, Heidi, I told her to take it out. She's right; it's not us. It was her, and I told her to put the uh, awning away, but she didn't want to. She thought she's messing up as a weatherman. I my weather skills match. Real everything that I do expert <laughs> not that yeah not that night so if you guys remember what happened was I had um, the whole yard sale thing I decided that we didn't have to necessarily put away this awning and put away the big tent and put away those canopies and guess what happened yeah well anyways we talked about in that previous video if you guys want to go see that go check that out but let me get this canvas on here and make sure everything still works all right, which I'm sure it will, because again, everything I do is expert. <laughs>